All right, guys, welcome to this episode. We're going to call Can You Fix Me? Um, this is like no other episode you've seen before. Um, it's going to be crazy. The stuff that you're going to see is going to leave you in utter disamazement. In fact, I need to make sure that you're okay to see this before we get started because well some of y'all might need to consult with your doctor to see if you're healthy enough for this yeah there's a couple of you probably ain't all right um i'm talking about physically i'm not talking about mentally because if i need to fix you mentally if I'm the one, there's probably a huge problem, right? Think that out. All right, so the matchbook of the episode, can you believe it, is Can You Fix Me? Can You Fix Me? It has a fan and a toaster. And um, so when you turn it over, it says, I am a broken appliance. That's kind of interesting. That is not uh, rationally analytical. It's just not. Because this matchbook is talking about itself like it's a fan or a toaster. That makes no sense. Anyway, I, this is kind of like what this is like is, you know, you used to send these matchbooks and you put your name on it and they would like teach you through the mail or something, then mail was eliminated, and now we have like electrical waves going through the air that makes our exchange right here possible. So this is like a prehistoric version of what they call distance learning, what you're doing now. So instead of you sending your kids off to school, they're in your living room and kitchen screaming, hollering all day, and you finally get to feel what it's like to be a teacher, right? Oh, people are far less critical as a teacher now that their own kid is the behavioral problem in their house 24 hours a day instead of the usual 12 that the, other, the teachers take care of. Anyway, we're getting way off out in the weeds, but the matchbook of the episode is, can you fix me? Anyway, so how do we get here? Well, this week has been full of chance happenings. You know, I'm doing these arch tops and flat tops now i'm fixing up six strings and i've taken a little break from the the coffee cans and the license plates and the cigar box of course i always have a few of them going in the background i'm actually building up some stock in case i want to do a blues festival or something but anyway so in my constant search um i find interesting things like again we want to want to check your pulse before i show you this one i don't know you know what? Yeah, you with the clean bowling shirt on, you don't, you can't, you come back in about two minutes here. Anyway, look at this. It is Pops and Fresh. You know Pops and Fresh, right? He has the spot on the wall between Honest Abe and Mrs. Olson. This is a very coveted spot. Anyway, I went to the barber shop. Yeah, you've been coveting this. I know that, but I got this. Now it needs to be fixed because it's got some issues, but nothing that some Earl Loop paste will not fix. So that was number one. Now, next, I go to a yard sale and I find this old file cabinet here, this little, I don't know whether you put people's names in it or something. Your Christmas list must be pretty long if you need something this big. <sighs> anyway. I picked this up for next to nothing and I'm looking at it and I'm thinking I can do a piezo and I can put a Mississippi license plate on the top and um, make a stomp box out of it. Remember I had this episode called Stomp Box, showed you how to do that, there's a link to it right up there but I'm also trying to figure out if I couldn't like mount a distortion pedal in here that way when I'm playing. Uh, like my stuff doesn't sound distorted enough already, I could just pull this drawer out and mount a distortion pedal down in there. And then when I'm done, I just shut it up like that. Anyway, I'm fixing to have an accident here, but that's what that one looks like. Next, 
I got a real showstopper here. You're not going to believe this or the story that goes with it. But do you see right here? You've been looking at that right there. You see it? It says Fragili. Fragili. You know Fragili, right? You still don't see it? Well, it's right there. Yeah, Fragili. Oh, what, you think I wouldn't have one of these? Are you kidding me? I invented this. I am so tired of people stealing my ideas. But anyway, Fragili. We're going to get to this in a minute. Now, you might have figured this out, but I have constant searches going on on uh, Marketplace and Craigslist and eBay and stuff for very specific things. And when that stuff pops up, you've got to move. Fred McDowell did. You've got to move give you a link to it right up there. Anyway, I am actually sitting in distance learning law class and we're talking about depositions or something and all of a sudden I feel that buzz in my pocket. No, not that one, a regular one on my cell phone. So I pick it up and um, it says there is a Harmony arch top down in Koreatown about 47 minutes away from me gone up just went up like the decibels from that motorcycle driving by see ya there we go they got this new thing called a muffler dude anyway it says that this thing's a hundred bucks so I kind of joined in the comment section, moved the class ahead by alienating the class. I was a master of that when I was a kid and got in the car and headed to Koreatown. And when I got there, I found this puppy right here. So first off, it looked okay. And it seemed fairly healthy. Except somebody tried to put some bedazzle or something or other. You see them little holes there? You see up there on the uh, the headstock where it says Harmony. Somebody had some little like, like them things you put on your fingernails or something. I don't know nothing about that. Maybe you all do. But anyway, I'll pick this thing up and put some strength in it. It's solid. It looks good. You're going to see this one. I think I'm going to call this one the Bedazzler, and it'll show up in a couple episodes. Yeah, that's very, very exciting, but not as exciting as Fragili, the Fragili story. Let's hit that now. Now, before I do the big reveal, there's going to be a story behind this I have to tell you. Um, and if you're still listening right now, that's on you. That's not on me. Uh, you can always give me a dislike and leave, but that would mean you go back to what you were doing, right? I know. I know. It's okay. Anyway, so I am clicking watch on something on eBay, and it's in Minnesota, right north of Wisconsin. And my people are from up around there somewhere. Um, you can tell. They're the ones with the bullet holes in the windshield. Anyway, so... I'm watching this thing. I get an offer from the seller. And I'm thinking, this thing is rough. I haven't seen anything this rough. Because um, even on the internet, this looks like a hobo guitar. So you're asking yourself, what's a hobo guitar? Well, some people, you know, one day they're a preacher. The next day they're a slide guitarist. Um, they're riding a train. They're doing day work. Um, and they got this guitar and it's usually made up of scraps and they fix it with whatever you would find in a hobo campsite, which is, I mean, if it's if you find something in a hobo junk pile, chances are humanity itself has been through this and they don't want it and it's up to you. And that's where I come into the picture. Anyway, so I get this offer from this seller and... Um, it was the weirdest offer I ever had. It said, why don't you buy this guitar for a penny and I'll ship it to you and then you use it on your episode. So I know right there, these people are watching me. You know, I thought the security camera I had around here in this system I put in was 
it's apparently it's not working. Anyway, these people know who I am. They know what I do. And they're telling me, hey, why don't you, the Samantha person says, why don't you build this out on your channel and then we'll figure out what happens after that. So, you know what? I made an offer back for far less than it was like laughable. And then I got the counter offer. It was what I made plus one penny. So Samantha shipped it to me and you and I are going to open it now. I can see it. It's really cool. Well, I will say one thing. Samantha keeps scotch tape in business and that's of course because they're 3M and they're in Minnesota. I don't think Minnesota has 3Ms in it, does it? I don't know. Anyway, look that up. I'm busy. You should be doing something to earn your keep here. Are you ready? Oh, I swear, this is the worst thing I've ever seen. Oh. There we go. Well, first thing I see is this thing started off life behind the eight ball. It doesn't have any F holes, and I don't know what you're going to do if you don't have that. It looks to be like a three-quarter size parlor guitar or something even though it's got three strings on it they're not in the right way oh i like that 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 loud car going by i mean i must have the loud car need a muffler somebody stole my catalytic converter convention anyway this is like the, this fretboard is interesting it's all, almost like bob log school bus let me give you a link to that below the album bob log school bus and um, it's got this tail piece. It looks like maybe it was made out of a sardine can or something. It's got this bridge that I think uh, is a little bit thicker than a toothpick. There's not much of that left. Um, the neck has a little bit of separation here. I'm going to do an episode called uh, Junk Arch Tops for Dummies. And I'm going to go through, you know, what kind of stuff you're looking here. Um, the headstock... I don't know, it looks like there's been a dog chewing on it, or, but there's certainly not much left of the paint. One of the tuners is missing, so you can, I can see you through there. You see my eyeball? Yeah, one of them is missing. Um, there's gears missing off of this one. And like I said, the paint is just terrible. There's virtually nothing left of this thing. You look on the back, it says Benny. I wonder where the jets went. Maybe that's when the band split up. I don't know. Uh, it looks like it got patched here with something. But the worst part about this guitar is if you look at it, the string action is really high. And it looks like the whole body is bowed right here. So this thing is fixing to cave in on itself. So I got this out of the box and I thought, you know what, there's not much left of this thing. Um, it's missing stuff, it's got cracks, it's it's the most beautiful thing I ever saw. And I decided, yes, I can fix you, I will fix you. So, we're going to take a shot of this on the bench right here. We're going to move this puppy and put it in the queue line. That might have your name on it if you got, you better get to work this week. You better do a lot of overtime. This one's going to be pricey when I'm done with it. But we're going to take a close look at this and well let's just do that right now just take a close look at this because when you see it again it's going to be in a more miserable condition than it is now hey you hear that beeping noise my neighbor is engaged in las listas getting it ready i don't know what but apparently it takes a long time and uh Luckily, I didn't have that stethoscope in my ear. Anyway, now that you've had a look at this, I'm going to go on a road trip, and I'm going to find some uh, junk to dress this up and make it look, well, I don't want it looking brand new, so i got to make it look a little bit junkier than it is right now. And uh, I'll see you when it's done. Samantha, I don't know what you did to me here. 
Ventura Highway when it's 105 outside. Yeah, so we are on the Ventura Highway, believe it or not. Was it as beautiful as you thought it was? Uh, yeah, no. Okay then. So we are going to Little Shop of Hoarders, not Little Shop of Horrors, Little Shop of Horrors in Fillmore, cultural capital of the world. And we are going to find a piece of something that is going to be integral. Maybe in structurally integral, not in structurally, structurally integral to the, I'm trying to make this last as long as possible because this is just amusing, amazing, disamazing scene. Oh yeah, Little Shop of Hoarders is open. I'm telling you, if this is not Coveter's Paradise, I don't know what is. All right, here we go. Okay, the trick to this is to get with the shop owner and make some small chat so it appears that you actually like them. They will fix your price. Wait a minute, there she is. Hello. Hi, how are you? I'm doing fine. That was a rhetorical question. <laughs> I'm looking for something that is, uh, I don't know. What do you have? I need something metal that will go on a, a guitar that should be thrown away. What do you got? metal I have some various metal cans here I'm um, kind of looking for something that a hobo would find on the side of the road or the railroad track well, this, do you have anything that a hobo would have eaten out of more likely something like this an old premium can that the crackers used to come in because people discarded them all the time oh that's where grandma used to hide her money oh <laughs> I, wish I, I want to buy it. Listen, before I buy it, don't yeah. open it because if my grandma's money is in there, I'm still in business. No, doesn't sound like it. <laughs> so <laughs> it's empty. So, so now that, hang on just a minute here. Now that this thing is dented, could you come down on the price at all? So, do you really think that this can is worth the money you're asking for it? Uh, for nine dollars and eighty cents, I think you got a heck of a deal. You know what? I think you're a liar. <laughs> All right, I got it. What's that, sir? You wanted this? No, I've heard TikTok, well, but I don't know that. Yeah, I'm sorry. I got Peggy Lee or Brenda Lee, whatever she is in here singing. I'm sorry for you. Hey, that's all I can do. I gotta go. I got a guitar to build, son. All right, guys, you remember this guitar? Tore up from the floor up, bent body, terrible paint job, nothing left of the neck and tuners. Flip it around here. Stuff missing, paint missing, neck separated from the body, Benny and the Jet starter kit. Somebody even relieved it of its strap button yeah that's about the worst ever well let's have a look now all right guys there it is with its chick flick teal sunburst paint job we adorned it with a cracker tin and a top of a cracker tin on top of that a tail piece there put a floating bridge on it it's got a, a coil going to there and the other one is a piezo which is hid up in there in the body um, we've got some pretty cool matchbooks on here as we go up and the top one is the theme can you fix me Oh, see that little bead right there? That's actually a pearl. You're going to want to watch the end of the episode to understand what that's all about. We kept the headstock just the way it was and just worked it over. Let me turn this thing around now. It's kind of interesting, the graphic I picked on this thing, because little did I know that it would have some 
obtuse meaning somewhere right the day after I put on it, but it's a Greyhound Lines uh, bus map of the United States and where the lines go. Uh, there's our signature greaser. It's not ours unless it's got a greaser on it. Hey, Pops and Fresh, what's going on, Padna? Um, we did an episode about the neck, uh, $3 neck reset. Yeah, link will be right up there right about now. Uh, we got our old nickel there. We've got Fred McDowell. Wisconsin Chair Company and Reuben Lacey. There's that neck, the paint is left. Of course, a lot of chick flick teal. Alrighty then. Um, I'll tell you what, let's uh let's hook this up to an amp and see how it sounds. Alright, let's see what this thing sounds like. So covering up the sound hole kind of affected the guitar's acoustic qualities, right? Well, let's see what this pickup did. Ooh, there it is. Is that all? No, oh no. We hear that hum. oxygen mask if you were on the string it's that high above the fretboard and it's junky but um, yeah you know what we are gonna go right now to see something really weird I mean if you don't like weird then you shouldn't be subscribed to my channel but this tops anything you've seen on my channel and pretty much anything just in general you know I always bring you the best Get ready for the best of weird. Oh, wow. I was like, dude. Anyway, there will be nothing to say uh, at the end of that uh, of what you're about to see. So before you go, give me a like right now. I'm afraid that you won't after. But give me a like. Subscribe if you haven't. And um, yeah, get ready to be in complete disamazement. You are not going to believe this. What a perfect way to end the unveiling of the Hobo Junk Pile guitar. Now you know that the Hobo Junk Pile, its life was over. It was in a miserable trash can in a place called Minnesota. Have you ever been there? Yeah, well don't bother. Anyway, its life apparently over, ready for the trash can to be buried in some meaningless landfill to serve no purpose. But then somebody with some vision gave it and sent it to me to give it new life, to breathe life into the hobo junk pile. Now, wouldn't it be interesting to know what's going to happen now that the hobo junk pile has been reincarnated into something very valuable and meaningful? I just wonder, where's it going to go What's going to happen to it? And what does the future hold for the Hobo Junk Pile? Well, guess what? I'm going to find out because 
Oh, look. Right there. Do you see what that says? The spiritual hobo tarot reader. Tarot? Tarot? Anyway. Greyhound bus. Hey, did I ever tell you about that episode I did about the Greyhound bus guitar? Right up there, right about now. Anyway, I'm going to have to go knock on a bus door. I may know all the answers. I want to thank you for coming in. I'm the spiritual hobo. I know you're here uh, in search of your destiny. Can I call you Tammy? Since uh, that name was etched onto you. And again, uh, thanks for coming in and it's a pleasure of mine to meet you. I feel that a person uh, that owned you, their name was close to Tammy. And I believe it was Tawny, does that resonate with you? But yet I am inclined to call you Tammy because that is the name of someone we know who is not able to speak. And I know in your life you've been made to speak but not your own words. I offer you a chance to look at your past, or your present, or your future, so that these cards may tell you what you're not able to tell others, and it'll tell you about yourself. So, Tammy, what would you like to see first? Your past, your present, or your future? Pick one of the cards. You're present very well. You're not finished being built. This is the Three of Pentacles. And if you'll notice, there's a building project going on on the card. Let me turn it correctly. Here you see a, a person, a mason, on a scaffold chiseling marks and engravements into a sanctuary. There's the presence of a woman and a priest. This talks about not only are you being built and built up because the workman is on a scaffold above the normal, above the mundane, but it talks that you're being built up according to the laws of destiny. That's the presence of the priest, according to divine law. I see a second life for you in this card, Tammy. I see that you are speaking of uh, a rejuvenation, a repurposing, a regeneration of yourself. But this time, not just for mundane music and words that others would uh, bring out of your strings, but words that you were always meant to share. So in the future, uh, we'll see that in a moment, but you're being built right now with your divine voice in you and not so much just your secular or mundane voice. I give you another chance to pick a card. Will you look at your past or would you like to know about your future? Pick one of the cards. Very good. Ah, you've chosen the future. So shall it be a time of suspension. This is the hanged man, but it's not a bad card. This person is not hanging by their neck. They're in suspension, hanging by their foot. It talks about in the future, a time of uh, suspension. You will not be used or activated immediately. There's a time of looking within yourself 
to bring up what is in you. I say this to you now, Tammy, that the ones that are helping you to regenerate and repurpose and come out of the garbage, scrap heap, as you did, they're helping you uh, to gain a higher purpose. So in other words, the music that does come out of you in the future, the player will not understand why they're being influenced in the way they are, and they'll make great music. But this you must source out of yourself. The workmen that are working you need your help. They're only using their hands. But within you is a releasing of your purpose and destiny, and you've always had one. Your time in the dumpster was a time of being alone, feeling rejected, unused and unworthy. You're here today because you never really believed that. And you do believe that you have a value and a worth and a destiny. And so your future shows that before that is activated, you're going to pull that out of yourself. So as the workmen begin to work with you to restore your physical attributes, you consciously in your invisible spiritual nature will be showing them things they didn't plan on in the construction and reconstruction of you. They're going to be led differently because out of you, their hands will sense direction. And little things that will be added to you will not be from their mind, but from your heart. This future is good because when you draw from yourself to bring into reality that which is of your essence, all hands must serve you. In concluding this session with you, Tammy, I, um, I feel as if you have another inquiry, something more that you would like to know. Um, I'm right, yes. Very good, you want to know about your past. In the past, you were called Tawny, or at least a human being named Tawny was your companion. Let us see what Taro has to say about that relationship. Back when you were Tawny, with Tawny. I'll turn the card. You have received a very, very strong symbol in tarot. This is the Magi, or the Magician card of tarot. There was magic between the two of you. She did not throw you away. You were thrown into the dumpster by other hands besides Tawny's. Tawny was the Magician. What this means is Mercury, the mind, and it's upright, the card is not reversed. She was bringing that which is above to below. And what that means, she was, and you with her, were bringing the divine into the lower state, which is reality. That which is invisible into the visible. You had a good life with her. She grew up. I see somehow that she was not in charge of her effects that things were left behind in her younger habitat that would, came under the uh, handling of others. And there, the connection of love and respect that was between you and Tawny was ignored. You were just an old, unused guitar to the people that determined your destiny from that point on. Tawny was gone. She grew up almost forgetting about her childhood toys and effects. I don't believe she went on to play guitar either, although she should somewhere in the future pick it back up. Life distracted her, and you, as a symbol of her connection to music, were left aside, as so many things are in this world, that people should endure and hang on to. They're let go for things that end up becoming trivial and unimportant in their life later on. Could be she met a guy and they didn't share music. And so you, that was her first love, became a not a first love. But she didn't do it uh, 
with any intention. She was growing. But your destiny is causing you to be in a different um, circumstance that Tawny would have never took you to. You took her far. She brought you a certain distance. Destiny has caused you to almost be gone, but yet your soul will not allow that. So in the past was a magical time with you and her. A time when you first spoke from your strings and you spoke to her. Music and feeling that she has never forgotten. You still are the magic in her in a very real way that I suppose someday she'll strike up again. But you had a magical past and your present is one that is being reconstructed. And in the future, from out of your essence, the workman will find your form and you will touch the one that you were meant to touch again. Don't, don't fret your past because you were found in a dumpster, okay? Um, most of the good stuff in life is found by the wayside. You have an essence in you, and I love it. It's good to sit with you. Thank you for coming in. Go forward in faith. I hope to see you again, or at least hear you again. Tammy. Before you go, I would like to give you something, and I'm hoping that it will embellish your form as a symbol of your new life, your old destiny, which is unfolding. You never lost it. You were just on the path to it. What I'd like to give you is something that may uh, become part of your form, put on you somewhere, and that you can look at or sense and always know that no matter what happens to you, you were born of the divine and you will always be on the path of the divine. Good. You will accept it. And here it is. This is a pearl. It's in the form of a bead. And I'm hoping that it maybe it could uh, grace your strings somewhere and remind you that within you, hiding within you, is the pearl of great price. A pearl of great price, which is wisdom. Thank you for receiving it. Thank you.